Welcome to Everyday Linux User. In today's video, we are looking at the latest version of Kubuntu, and this is Kubuntu 25.10. So I'm going to go to the release notes first. And the first thing you'll spot is the support lifespan. Now, the support lifespan is only for nine months. So the purpose of these point releases, the 2510s uh, and the interim ones so 2404 would be the long-term support release and next year 2604 will be the next long-term support release in between you get these point releases and what they are they're more experimental and they come up with all the latest features and they try things out so this version isn't for your average user this is for the person that wants to try out new features before they get into the long-term support release if you are a normal user, I recommend sticking with Kubuntu 2404. But if you want the latest, this is it. And what you get is Plasma 6.4. You get the Plasma Wayland session. And now here's the key thing here. If you like X11, it's not installed by default on a clean install. You can still install it. And all you have to do is install the Plasma session X11 package. But by default, it isn't installed. So you're stuck with uh, the Wayland session to start off with. When it comes to frameworks, you get Qt 6.9.2 and KDE framework 6.17.0. The majority of KDE gear are now at version 25.801 and many other applications have been updated. Firefox 143 Snap is the default browser from the Snap Store and LibreOffice 25.8 is provided by default in the full installation. Now, the kernel is 6.17, so it's a very up-to-date kernel. So known issues, and this is kind of an interesting one, Flatpak is failing to install applications due to missing or incorrect app armor rules. Now that's not really a problem if you're using Kubuntu because Kubuntu runs with Snap packages because it's part of the Ubuntu family. So that is the key difference between Kubuntu and other KDE distros. So this month I am focusing on KDE centric distros. My month on is about KDE Neon, which is Ubuntu 2404 with the KDE desktop and all the latest applications for KDE. It's Ubuntu 2404, but then they've got their own repositories that gives you the latest KDE um, software and applications. So that's where KDE Neon sits itself. And then the other distro that I've tried this month is Chaos. And that's an independent distribution that also ships with uh, the latest KDE applications, but it's primary focus is the KDE desktop and Qt. And therefore it really focuses and makes sure that that is working full stop. Now, Kubuntu is part of the Ubuntu family anyway, and it's 25.10, which means it's really up to date. It's as up to date as Ubuntu can be. Uh, uh, but like I said before, X11 isn't available. So how does that affect things? Well, Ubuntu and Kubuntu, etc. would not do this if they didn't think Wayland was capable of doing everything they needed to do with it. And what I would say is, the software that you can install actually works quite well. So I've installed Voco Screen, which is a video recorder, and I prefer it to OBS because it's more lightweight, but it doesn't always work with every distribution, uh, especially using Wayland, because it's, it's quite often they ship with an older version or there's pipe wire um, and other pieces of software and libraries missing. So, but Voco Screen works on this. Uh, the the performance of Wayland isn't always as good as using X11, but you can see this works quite well and the menu systems work quite well. It doesn't have any major slowdowns or anything like that. When it comes to hardware, uh, the F it's Kubuntu, so you'd expect everything to work. So the Wi-Fi works. Uh, the Bluetooth works if I can find it. There it is. We'll enable that. We'll set a Bluetooth device up. And there you can see my Bluetooth device has been found. We click connect. 
Now initially it says failed, but in a second it will say connected. Connecting. And there you can see it has connected. What about other hardware devices? Let's look at printing. And you can see the printer has set up perfectly well. Now Ubuntu has always been good at setting up things like hardware devices. Um, they generally work quite well with most hardware devices and it's easy to set things up. Uh, this sets it apart from Chaos. Chaos I had to do a couple of extra steps to get the printing working. Uh, I had to install the HP Lip library. KDE Neon worked quite well but then it uses Ubuntu 24.04 as a base. What software do we have installed by default? Uh, so we have the Kate text editor which comes with KDE anyway. We have a few games. We have Mahjong, Minds, which is Minesweeper, Patience and we have Sudoku. Under graphics we have Gwenview, Critter, LibreOffice Draw, Ocular which is a PDF viewer and then we've got some scanning software for your scanner. Under internet, not all these come by default by the way, Angelfish I installed and Falcon I installed. Firefox comes by default. Chrome I installed and I'll get to that later on. KDE Connect comes installed and it helps you connect your phone to your desktop. KRDC is a remote desktop uh, viewer so you can connect to your Windows PC or other Linux PCs. LuaKit I installed. NeoChat is a chat client and Thunderbird is an email client. Under multimedia we have Elisa which is an audio player. Haruna, which is a video player, Caden Live I installed is for video editing, Olivia I installed, and VLC I installed, and Voco Screen I installed as well for recording this video. Under Office, you get the full LibreOffice suite, and then under Science and Maths, it's still LibreOffice, and then you want a system and utilities that are general system tools. It's worth noting that when you install Kubuntu, you can choose to have a minimal option which just comes with things like Firefox and a few basic tools. But the version I've installed here is the fully featured version that comes with games and other applications as well, which is why you get things like Gwenview, Elisa and um, Media Plays, etc. To install software, you can use the Discover Software Center. Now, as I mentioned previously, Kubuntu uses Snap packages. Uh, Chaos, uh, when I installed that, that only comes with the Octopi installer and that only installs packages native to Chaos. You can set up uh, flat packs and you can install Discover within Chaos, but um, it's a few extra hoops to jump through. There's no flat packs with Kubuntu. If you try and set it up, you saw that in this the release notes that there might be problems with that, but you've got everything you need with Snap packages anyway. Uh, KDE Neon um, is whilst Ubuntu based, it does come with flat packs enabled as standard. So if you prefer flat packs, KDE Neon is the way to go. But within Kubuntu, if you want Spotify, you just search for Spotify and it will appear. You can install games, you've got Steam available, and you've got most packages you would like available. Uh, one that you don't have is Chrome, which is why I showed you it in my menu earlier. And we'll come on to that now. But how do you get it? You have to go onto the internet. So I am using Falcon. And if you go to google.com, uh, you can go to the Chrome page and you can download Chrome. And it downloads it as a Debian package or Ubuntu. You can see that there. So when you accept that and install, go to your downloads folder. And you'll see Google Chrome's there. And what we can do is we can right click. We can open in terminal here. And then you just have to type this command here, which is a sudo space dpkg minus i, and then the name of the file. So google hyphen chrome hyphen stable underscore current underscore amd64 dot deb. And that will install Google Chrome onto your machine. Now, not everyone likes Google Chrome, so uh, there's plenty of other browsers available. And like I said, Falcon is currently my favorite because it's really lightweight um, and it fully featured and it works but it doesn't use up a huge amount of memory and things like that. So that's why Falcon is my current go-to web browser. So Kubuntu is easy to install, hardware works, you get a good rare software to start with. You can install software easily using the Discover Software Center. And for those of you coming from Windows 10, it's really easy to navigate. You've got all the 
menu options in, in a really easy to follow format. Uh, if you want to change things like your desktop wallpaper, all you have to do is right click on the desktop and choose desktop and wallpaper. And it comes with a nice set of images to start with. You can add in your own. Um, if you've got some in your pictures folder, you just select them from your pictures folder. If you want to find some new wallpapers, you can do it straight within the tool. You don't have to go onto the internet. You just go click get new. Say you want a picture of a car. You can get something like this. You just click install. And then you click use. We can close that down. And if we go up here, uh, we click that and click apply. And when we go back to our wallpaper, you can see you've got a rather fetching image of a car. Now, one I installed earlier was this one. And this is one I really quite like. And you can see that's rather fetching. Now, uh, there are other things you can change in the settings tool here. You can change anything to do with input and output device. You can change display stuff. You've got all your stuff for connected devices. You've got Bluetooth, Thunderbolt printing. You've got your network stuff. You've got theming, so you can change the theming. So if you prefer a light theme, you can click on Breeze. You can dark theme, you can, you can click on Breeze Dark. Default Kubuntu, you can get more themes up here. I've got a guide for customizing KDE, should you need one. But all in all, Kubuntu is a really, really usable distribution, especially for those of you coming from Windows 10, looking to make the leap. And I, I would say it's probably better for you than going straight to Ubuntu uh, because the, the desktop is more of a Windows-esque type desktop environment. Personally, I prefer uh, KDE to GNOME. I haven't always said that in the past, but at the moment I would say this is true. Uh, but that is the end of the video. Uh, in a future video, I'm going to be comparing Chaos, KDE Neon and Kubuntu to see which is the best of the KDE distros. Wish me luck on that one because it's not going to be easy. If you want to see that video, uh, hit the subscribe button. If you like this video, hit the like button. And that's it. I'll see you next time on Everyday Linux User.